Hello friends, this video on neat atoms is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 26. 50% of the x-ray coming from a Kolisch tube is able to pass through a 0.1 millimeter thick aluminium foil. Okay, so the potential difference between the target and the filament is increased. So if you actually look at this tube from where, where x-ray is produced, you have a foil like this. And you have a target material somewhere here and then you have the electrons which move with some velocity and they strike the target. Now the moment the electrons strike the target the x-rays are emitted from here. So this is the target and this is the filament and the, there is a potential difference which is maintained between the filament and the target. So more or less this is how the setup looks like. So here in this question it is told that what happens if we vary the potential difference that is if we vary the value of this V between the foil and the target. So here we are basically increasing the potential difference between the target and the filament. Now when the potential difference is increased, the kinetic energy of the electrons hitting the target would also increase and these electrons, now what normally happens is these electrons enter into the target material, they lose their kinetic energy and gradually come to rest. So that, that's what normally happens with the electrons. Now when the potential difference is increased, the kinetic energy would also increase and as a result the distance after which the electrons are brought to rest would also increase. Therefore the thickness of the target material should also increase because you know the electrons are coming very fast. Now the moment they are coming very fast they might need some more distance to be covered before they actually come to rest. So you need a thicker material. So the thickness of the aluminium foil should definitely be more than what it was before. So earlier it was 0.1 mm. So now it should be, we, we cannot say precisely how much it should be but it should definitely be greater than 0.1 mm. Question number 27. Visible light passing through a circular hole forms a diffraction disk of radius 0.1 mm on a screen. If x-ray is passed through the same setup, the radius of the diffraction disk would be. So here the only difference is that we have changed the light. Earlier it was visible light, now it is x-ray. And we know that x-rays have short wavelength. So lambda for x-ray, that is wavelength of x-ray is lesser than the value of wavelength for visible light. Now since the wavelength is lesser and we know that the diameter of the diffraction disk, now the diameter of the diffraction disk is proportional to the radius of the diffraction disk which in turn is proportional to wavelength. Now wavelength for x-ray is lesser therefore the radius of the diffraction disk for x-ray would also be lesser than that of visible light. So this would be less than 0.1 mm. Question number 28. The potential difference applied between the potential difference applied to an x-ray tube is increased. As a result, the emitted radiation intensity increases, minimum wavelength increases, intensity remains unchanged, minimum wavelength decreases. Now, as I have mentioned just now that in, in the setup of uh, the x-ray tube, you have a filament like this and you have a target material like this and there is a potential difference which is maintained between these two. Now the moment you increase this potential difference what happens is the kinetic energy of the electrons hitting the target that also gets impacted because the kinetic energy of the electron is equal to E into V. So when we increase the potential difference the kinetic energy also gets increased. Now these electrons when they hit the target only then the x-rays are emitted. So how does this impact the wavelength of the x-ray? Now wavelength of the x-ray emitted is given by hc divided by e right and what is this e? e is nothing but e into v. So basically you see that lambda is inversely proportional to the potential difference. So when you increase the potential difference then the minimum wavelength decreases. So potential difference increases means the wavelength has to decrease right. So this is 
a correct option one more correct option is intensity remains unchanged now changing the potential difference doesn't cause any change in the intensity of the x ray that is being produced so c is also a correct option question number 29 the distance between the cathode that is the filament and the target in an x ray tube is 1.5 meters if the cutoff wavelength is 30 picometers find the electric field between the cathode and the target so in this case the value of minimum wavelength is given as 30 picometer which is equal to 30 into 10 to the power minus 12 meters and what is the distance between the filament and the target that is given as 1.5 meters so first of all let us try to calculate the energy of the radiation so the energy will be hc divided by lambda so h is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 into c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by lambda which is 30 into 10 to the power minus 12 so this value comes out to be 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 15 joules now if you want to convert it into electron volt you divide it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so this comes out to be 4.14 into 10 to the power 4 electron volts. So this would be the energy of the radiation. Now we know that energy is equal to charge into potential difference. So potential difference would be equal to E divided by charge. So this will be equal to 4.14 into 10 to the power 4 volts because here also you have e here also you have e so this is so basically this is electron volt so if you convert it into joules it you will multiply it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and again you have divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so this potential difference will be 4.14 into 10 to the power 4 volts now if you want to calculate electric field we know that electric field is nothing but uh, the potential gradient that is change in potential difference with distance so this would be equal to v by d so v is 4.14 into 10 to the power 4 divided by d is 1.5 meters so this comes out to be 2.7 into 10 to the power 4 volt per meter question number 30 the wavelengths of K alpha, L alpha X-rays of a material are 21.3 picometer and 141 picometer respectively. Find the wavelength of K beta X-ray of the material. Let us quickly draw the K L M series of X-rays. So this is K, this is L, this is M. So this is K alpha, this is K beta. So anything that is falling to the the K series that's K. So the first line is K alpha, second line is K beta. Similarly, this would be L alpha. So these are the three lines that we are talking about in this problem. Now let us say that the energy corresponding to each of these is E1, E2 and E3 respectively. So we can say that E1 is equal to Hc divided by lambda K alpha. E2 is equal to hc divided by lambda k beta and e3 is equal to hc divided by lambda l alpha so these are the values for the three different energies now looking at this uh, diagram we can say that e1 plus e3 should be equal to e2 right so e1 plus e3 which is equal to hc divided by lambda k alpha plus hc divided by lambda l alpha so this is equal to hc into 1 by lambda k alpha plus 1 by lambda l alpha now the value of lambda k alpha and l alpha are given here so this is equal to hc into 1 by 21.3 plus 1 by 141 picometer so therefore we convert it into meters that is 10 to the power minus 12 and take it outside so this is equal to hc into 0 0.0469 plus 0 0.00709 into 10 to the power 12 so this is equal to 0 0.0539 into 10 to the power 12 into hc 
So this is the sum of the energy levels E1 and E3, right? And what about E2? So, so this E1 plus E3 will be equal to E2, right? As per the diagram. So looking at the diagram, you can very easily see that E1 plus E3 is equal to E2. So E2 is equal to 0 0.0539 into 10 to the power 12 into hc but here we have written e2 as hc divided by lambda k beta so this is equal to 0 0.0539 into 10 to the power 12 into hc so hc hc will get cancelled therefore lambda k beta will be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.0539 into 10 to the power 12 which is equal to 18.55 picometer. So this would be the wavelength of k beta x-ray of the material. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on atoms. So we have tried to solve a lot of questions from the topics which are generally asked in NEET exam and I hope that um, once you go through all of these questions you will get a fair idea about how to solve numericals on atoms. So keep solving more and more questions. Uh, they will help you to uh, get your concepts cleared. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.